In the beginning, the partnership of Tracy Wilson and Rob McCall seemed unlikely. She was from the West, he was a Maritimer. She was organized and efficient, he was unbridled energy. Together, however, they created magic on ice. In the most controversial of figure skating disciplines, dance, these two found success. And beyond that, a very special friendship. Right off, what I first noticed was it wasn't going to work. Tracy was so very tall and carried herself so elegantly. Rob was, was, was taller in stature and build, but we have what we call a standing height and a skating height. When they were on the ice skating, Rob was shorter. Robert was very flamboyant, very artistic. Tracy was the technician who liked to have everything perfect and everything basically the same every time she performed it. They both understood that the other person held some kind of magic number that would complete the other person. And it was that merging of talents and brains and creativity that made them so exceptional. Rob McCall was born on September 14, 1958, in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Tracy Wilson came along three years later, September 25, 1961. Her birthplace, Lachine, Quebec. She loved to compete, running whatever it was she, she wanted to, to get there first. When she started to compete, particularly at swimming, we had to suggest that the I won, I won was not in keeping. He was a real ham right from the start, and he loved to perform, and he loved to be appreciated. And so I would show him how I would appreciate the things he learned by clapping, you know, clapping. I always did that with my kids, too. And he loved that. Rob found the skating rink to be the perfect outlet for performing. I think for a lot of reasons it was Ron skating. I, th I think the lineage, you know, that my mom was in the ice capades and that she had us both on skates at, at a very early age, and she was the the local Nova Scotian teacher. I didn't impress him in any way to skate, but um, I was younger than the athletic and I loved going skating. And he loved to look at my skating pictures, the old skating pictures of ice capades. Rob gravitated to the dance discipline in figure skating, and with partner Marie McNeil, he won the Canadian Championship in 1981. Meanwhile, after suffering a knee injury, Tracy turned to dance as well. With Mark Stokes, she won the 1980 Canadian Junior title but they did not share the same dream. He wasn't dedicated to doing run-throughs over and over and over again, and you just have to. And Tracy is a workhorse. The partnership dissolved in 1981. Meanwhile, on the East Coast, another team had parted ways. Our disappointment was not uh, being put on the Olympic team in 1980. And with the next year being 81 Canadians in Halifax, in their hometown, we decided that we would stay together and uh, go forward and try to win the championship there, which we did. And then I knew from there that that was going to be um, my time to sort of take my path in a different direction. Neither McCall nor Wilson was ready to call it quits, although Tracy flirted with the idea of going to university. I called my dad and I said, you know what, I think it's time to call up SFU and see if I can still get my application in. And my dad said to me, well, hold on one minute. I know that Rob McCall is still looking for a partner. He flew into Toronto within a couple of days and we tried out and it just felt right, right from the start. But the funny thing was I'd be skating with him, you know, you'd be in hand in hand. And all of a sudden I kind of looked back and was like, oh, I'm skating with Rob McCall, you know, because I knew him to be the Canadian champion and I held him in high regard. Certainly from the, the public's perspective, they did not seem at first glance to be the, in the Russian style of dance teams. They were almost the same height. They were the same um, sort of build in the sense that they were both uh, strong and athletic. We definitely looked mismatched and I was nowhere near his level technically or artistically. It was like, I was sixth in Canada, and he was a Canadian champion with world championship material. Height and experience were not the only factors working against them. She was the complete antithesis of Rob. If Rob couldn't do something, 
Rob would say, no, I don't feel comfortable doing that. If Tracy couldn't do something, she'd say, it's okay, I'll, I'll do it. I'll work on it and work on it. Then she could do it. A few months after getting together, Tracy Wilson and Rob McCall won their first Canadian title. Behind the scenes, however, adjusting to each other's ways belied such quick success. Rob was flamboyant, kind of crazy, uh, really outlandish with just the wildest sense of humor and a kind of a lifestyle that went along with it. He wasn't much into discipline or training particularly. He liked to party. Tracy, on the other hand, could have been the poster girl for discipline. He was uh, inspirational, but she was training oriented. I mean, he, he would work out some footwork and do it, and it would be absolutely great. And she would follow it and fine, and the next day they'd do it again. And she said, that's not what you did yesterday. And he said, oh, yes, it is. In their first year together, they were 10th at the World Championships. The next season, Wilson and McCall came up with an unforgettable program. The assigned music for the original dance was rock and roll. In 1983, when they did the straight cat strut, that was... Uh, a major turning point for them. We did it in our first competition, it just felt right. When that music came on, it was just in, in uh, you know, you just your intuition said, this is right. And audience, you could feel the reaction in the audience and the judges nailed us on it. I think at that competition, like we were top three and we dropped to sixth with that program, which was huge. And the head of the International Skating Union at the time was at the competition and said, you have to change that music, it's not rock and roll. It was quite devastating for them because it was such a, uh, such a great piece of work. And they believed in it, and they stuck by their guns, and they did their research post the event, and it was proven that it was a rock and roll. And then at the World Championships, we came sixth uh, with the Stray Cat Strut, and the same man who said we had to change it came up to us there and said, congratulations, that's the best thing you've ever done, keep up the good work. And that was a very valuable lesson because what Rob and I learned at that point was trust your instincts. Rob and Tracy also realized that it was themselves and the audience that mattered most, not the opinion of the judges. But it was not the end of their struggles. Their personality differences continued to haunt them. I think for about a year, Rob and I did not like each other. And we would make the most of the situation, but honestly, I didn't like him. Well, Rob liked to work hard and play hard. Loved his evenings out. He was always the life of the party. But that life of the party was taking its toll in the rink. In 1984, Tracy and Rob enlisted the help of sports psychologist Peter Jensen. When we started to meet, initially, it was at Tracy's doing it because Tracy wanted more structure. We did personality profiles and really got to understand each other as a person and as a competitor. We did a lot of stuff around confidence because uh, Rob would do two run-throughs or something and go, fine, that's fine, that's fine. Well, Tracy's confidence came from a massive number of run-throughs. So we'd work out an arrangement where they'd agree to do them a certain number of times, which gave Tracy the confidence that she needed. But on the other hand, Rob needed time to be creative. You know, he'd have half an hour at the start of each session where he'd be off twizzling and jumping and skating on his own and kind of satisfying that in him. The arrangement worked and at the 1986 World Championship they had their breakthrough. They won the bronze medal. When you get there it's like okay you know this is it and this is at that point what we'd worked hard for and the, and the goal we had set but um, you immediately start thinking about that one step and that step, you know. Okay, now what do we have to do and where do we go from here? That would be determined quite quickly. The three of us, we had different opinions. And so we realized that we were gonna have to go our own way. It was not long after the 1986 World Championship that Tracy Wilson and Rob McCall left coach Bernie Ford. And they elected to begin being coached by Mary Jane Stahl, who was the consummate packager. 
great coach, a wonderful friend, a tremendous manager, but a real a star when it comes to putting all the perfect details in place. I can still remember feeling like I could feel my heart pounding inside thinking it was so exciting and yet I was very nervous because I knew they had the potential to be really, really good. With coaches Mary Jane Stong and John Briscoe, Wilson and McCall won their second world bronze medal. Now it was time to prepare for the competition of their lives, the 1988 Calgary Olympics. But first, a wedding. I met Brad when I was 18 and had come out to Toronto to train. A lot of people think that a relationship takes away from your training. And it's interesting because it only ever helped my training. To be able to go home after problems with Rob and have a fresh perspective. And, and I guess I was very lucky too because Rob and Brad really liked each other. While Tracy was settling down, Rob remained the life of the party. Well, first of all, Rob's jokes were legendary. I first heard him tell the white mouth frog story at a bar in a hotel in Budapest where the language is different every, and by the end the entire bar was watching him tell the story. So I was in the in the hotel room walking down the hallway and I could hear the screams of laughter coming out from one of the hotel rooms and I looked through the door which was open and there was Rob sitting on the floor and around him was a group of judges, top judges and he's telling them these horrendous jokes and they were screaming with laughter. Rob's jokes could help alleviate the pressure during stressful times. The lead up to the Calgary Olympics was certainly that. The difficult uh, thing about competing in a home country is you are living the Olympics not for two weeks, but for a full year. A full year because the country's getting ready. Tracy and Rob's confidence could be bolstered if they had the perfect program. Tracy had gone to the ballet and uh, saw elite syncopations. And she had just started to be interested in the ballet. And she saw this piece and thought, wow. Ballerina Vanessa Harwood worked with Rob and Tracy, perfecting expression and movement. Tracy and Rob's main competition would come from Russia. Klimova, Ponomarenko, and Besmianova Bukin were the reigning world gold and silver medalists. I think the Russians were um, had stayed in that extra year to win gold and they had their machines in, in uh, operation to make sure that that happened. I think that somewhere deep down they knew that they were in a sense fighting a losing battle. Rob and Tracy left the politics to others and concentrated on the task at hand. They stood in third place going into the free dance. When they stepped on the ice the welcome was overwhelming. So I dreamed and, and visualized hearing the ovation and imagining the ovation just kind of walk, because you couldn't pretend it wasn't there, you couldn't block it out. Okay, there's the ovation, wash it over, gone, and now just focus. Once we finished the first two pieces, the slow piece, then I really started to unwind. And I was allowing myself to let go with the music and just to kind of be with it instead of to keep it in. They just had the audience you know, in the palm of their hand because it was such an entertaining piece. The music ended and it was like done over, you know, now I can take it all in and now I can get the goosebumps. And that was where I just remember looking up and just thinking I want to thank somebody. You know, I just, you know, have to give thanks for this moment. The judging panel decided it was a performance worthy once again of a bronze medal. People still say that they should have won the free program. Um, I think they could have. I can't imagine what it must feel like to know that it almost doesn't matter what you do, yet they never complained. They concentrated very clearly. 
on what their goals were, and that was to entertain their home country. I have no feelings of being ripped off or we should have been this or we should have been that. I wouldn't, I honestly wouldn't change anything. Wilson and McCall went to their last world championships in Budapest. Bronze yet again. They decided it was time to turn professional, but it was a career that was short-lived. We had an opening number where they had spotlights on the ice and um, at that point I walked into the rink and there was a spotlight in the spot where we would stand and the announcer said Tracy Wilson and Rob McCall and the spotlight went out. Where the legends come to play, ESPN Classic Canada. stand and the announcer said Tracy Wilson and Rob McCall in the spotlight went out. Their professional career was over but Rob continued to work as a choreographer until his illness became too much. Meanwhile Tracy had started a family but when Rob was admitted to hospital he was her first priority. For me I always just felt like I was letting him down because in our 10 years together um, I was always able to kind of take care of him and lead the way and okay we got a problem here let's do this okay and, and very much um, always felt like I could help him and in this case he was on his own. And we never spoke about dying because he that wasn't in his vocabulary. We were sitting around and looking through old photographs and um, and watching endless videos <laughs> of every free dance and every um, OD that he had done with Tracy and with Marie and uh, then he just one t he just we had a toast and he said uh, I'll miss you guys. Robert McCall died on November 15th 1991. He was 33. And I don't know if I ever will totally recover. I try to put a brave face on but deep within me there's that loss that uh, you have to deal with on a daily basis. And, but I, I don't tend now to go there so much because when I go there, I thank God every minute for having given me Rob because it was such a wonderful experience. He, he sits right here on my shoulder and he reminds me every day to just live the moment and live it fully. I knew I had um, no intention of skating. And I know now it was because if I dealt with being on the ice, I dealt with being without Rob. Times would come up where I'd be at a skating event and the feeling would come back where all of a sudden it was like I can't run from those feelings anymore. So, and I just, you just kind of, you move on. After Rob McCall passed away, Tracy and Brian finished organizing Skate the Dream a skating show that Rob envisioned to raise money for AIDS research. Rob was always the sort of individual who, who never hid who he was. And his, his work for um, the raising of money for the AIDS cause, it, it left a legacy. Tracy's life now is off the ice. A mother of three and a broadcaster, her strong work ethic remains intact and controversies in the world of figure skating affect her profoundly. Rob and I had this opportunity to compete at the level we did. I look at the skaters coming up and I want them to have that opportunity. I have seen her on many occasions uh, hold sobbing competitors who've come to her for solace or comfort. Uh, I've also seen her with judges and referees um, asking, you know, why is it like this? Fill me in, teach me about what it is you're looking for. Although Tracy is part of a new team in the world of broadcasting, the rest of the world has not forgotten the team of Wilson and McCall. Rob and Tracy broke ground in so many different ways for, for skaters to follow. Together as, as partners and each with their own um, visions, they so clearly took, uh, at least dancing in Canada, and I think also in the world, in whole new directions. The names Wilson and McCall will stay in skating 
and in the skating history books forever. Rob, although he's no longer with us, is still an influence, putting a face to a terrible disease and helping raise money towards its cause. Tracy, of course, as a commentator, tirelessly works to have a positive impact on her sport. They had a huge impact. They are Canada's only Olympic medalists in dance, and they were inducted into Canada's Figure Skating Hall of Fame in January 2003. For Profile, I'm Rod Blunt. Canada's next hopefuls were in the dance competition. Coming into the 88 games, Tracy Wilson and Rob McCall had two world bronze medals, but they were in tough against two Russian teams, the world gold and silver medalists. There are three sections to the dance competition, and after the first two portions, Wilson and McCall stood in third. Our next competitors, nos prochain concurrents, representing Canada, du Canada, Tracy Wilson and Rob McCall. So I dreamed and, and visualized hearing the ovation and imagining the ovation just kind of why, because you couldn't pretend it wasn't there, you couldn't block it out. Okay, there's the ovation, wash it over, gone, and now just focus. They just had the audience in the palm of their hand because it was such an entertaining piece. The music ended and it was like done over, you know, now I can take it all in and now I can get the goosebumps. Although the crowd favorites, it's bronze yet again. People still say that they should have won the free program. It's just that they didn't get the final support from the judges. I think the Russians had stayed in that extra year to win gold, and they had their machines in, in uh, operation to make sure that that happened. Yet, there was never a sense of desperation, never a sense of loss, never a sense of giving up. I have no feelings of being ripped off, or we should have been this, or we should have been that. I, wouldn't, I honestly wouldn't change anything. 